Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Who is on the block back again? We're in the garage. And there's something on a rotisserie. Nice. So this is Mike's Mercury Cougar. He dropped this off for me to take care of some work. And this is going to be going back to get the powertrain, suspension, drivetrain, all that exciting stuff to make it go, put back on. So we've got a two-door Mercury Cougar, which I think they only came in two-door, kind of like the Mustang. And you can see there has been some modification here to tuck a wider tire in the rear. And aside from that, everything seems to be stock. So while it's here, we're going to be taking care of round aligning the trunk, these fender wells, the underbody, That's all this area down through here, all the way back, the inner rockers, all of that. We're going to round align the outside here on both sides. Anywhere where there's not going to be paint and it's going to be exposed to road dirt, water, grime, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Same thing on this side. All of that. We're also going to take care of... Painting the interior, so the metal dash is going to paint, the glove box, then there's some garnish trim that goes around this area here and up there and over there and back around there and up here and all that kind of fun stuff. As well as the interior, we're going to take care of painting the steering column, which is uh, sitting back there on a cart. There would be a fuel cell that goes in the rear, we're going to take care of painting that as well. And... That will be it for this portion of the work. So we got back here. It's an I did it steering column. I believe this one's raw steel. So we'll be painting this the interior color. There we go. That's the uh, hood latch. We'll be painting that up. And then we also have some Raptor liner that we're going to be putting under the body. And some paint of various sheens and finishes that we'll be using for the engine bay and the interior. So, that is pretty much it. All the goodies are here on the cart, ready to go. Oh yes, here are the interior trim pieces that we're going to paint. These have all been sandblasted, which is super cool. Because if you look, let me flip one of these over. These trim pieces have some very intricate parts. Look at the detail in that thing. So, so cool. So cool. Man, that's awesome. I'm excited. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. And in here we've also got an ashtray, I believe. Yep, ashtray. And the bulb box for the inside. Um, I think we're going to repaint this the color of the engine bay. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is going to be engine bay color. So I'm going to scuff all this down, sand it down. And make sure it's nice and smooth, and then we'll go ahead and paint that as well. I don't know which gun I'm going to use on this work. I'm probably going to use my Mini Triple Eight for these small parts because it does a really good job with fan adjustment and fine atomization. It's got a 1.0 tip, so that's probably what I'll use on all these small parts. I could use a larger gun, but in order to get a really fine, fine, nice finish, that's probably what I'll use. That's this one right here, the Mini Triple Eight. It's a little bit dirty. It's been sitting back here getting dust all over it. But that's the one I'll be using for the small parts. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a 1.2. So, yeah. I've used that one before. I did the mirrors and the ladder bars. No, traction bars for the Paul Hunter Camaro with this. Worked out really good. It's a nice gun. I've actually been pretty impressed with it for a generic. Um... Then for the rest of the body of the car, I'll probably, you know, I've been really wearing out this R500 as my, kind of my go-to. Huh. However, we may get the Mark 1 back out because you guys know I love this thing. And yes, yeah, completely disassembled. I took it apart. I cleaned it. I didn't even reassemble it. It's been sitting there. Uh, let's see. I've got, what else I got back here on the shelf? I got the Intools N30, which is a really good gun. I had a problem with it leaking down here on this fitting where my pinky's at. And I ended up 
taking it apart and putting it to the side. The manufacturer actually sent me a replacement part, so we may pull this out and take care of spraying the interior. It's a small bodied gun, has a really nice fan, easily adjustable here. Similar to the Mark I, just a little bit different, but um, it's a pretty cool gun. I do like that one as well. And, well, <clears throat> since I'm back here, I have another spray gun up here. And that one there. And I've got more spray guns in here. Look at that. <laughs> Maybe we should do a giveaway. What, what do you think? A giveaway? Giveaway? I think so. Alright, um, I think that that's it for the, yeah, I think that's it. Those are all the trim pieces, we'll paint those. I've got a rack, actually, let's see. That rack back there, up at the front of the shop, this is what I'll hang those pieces from, if you guys are curious as to how I do this, um, you'll see this later, of course, when I go to paint these, but it's a rack that I take wire, and I will tie to the mounting post, so I can spray the entire row of parts all at one time so I get the same finish, everything, all the way across. So that's how I do that. Works really good. I use this rack for a lot of stuff actually. I uh, use it for uh, the Ice White Silverado White Lightning. I used it for the Poe Hunter Camaro. Um, golly, what else? I've, I've used it for a lot of small parts can't even remember all of them actually but yes yeah, a very handy rack easy to roll around it's got wheels on it love this thing very cool oh yes the rotisserie i don't know if I, I didn't mention that yeah so this was delivered on the rotisserie which is awesome because hopefully one day three wheels will have one of these because man <laughs> it's like a dream you pull the pin right there you can rotate this thing around it's got jacks on the front and the back, so you can jack it up and down. This thing is awesome. And it rolls really easily. So, it would be a wonderful addition to the shop. Maybe one day, we'll have one of these. Of course, the rate I'm going, I'm going to need a bigger building. Because, man, that rotisserie, it takes up a good 22 feet with this car mounted to it. Yeah, it's big. Almost 24 feet. I'm looking at the building right now. Yeah, at least 24 feet. Oh, I'm sorry, at least 22 feet, if not 24 feet. Very, very close. Cause my purlins are 12 feet apart, and that's 24 feet right there. You can see we're pretty much there, and we're just inside the door. So if you're wondering how big, of course, it also depends on the size of the vehicle, which this cougar's got some girth to her. She's pretty long, and she's thick. Look at those fenders. Mmm, flared out. Oh, yeah. So this will be a pro touring build, just in case you guys are wondering. The owner has some pretty cool plans for this thing. And um, hopefully, it will be back to get painted. So I'm taking care of the underwork right now, and the engine bay, and this stuff. And hopefully he'll decide that I'm the one who's going to paint it for him, because that would be pretty cool for me to do another pretty much start to finish. You guys know I did the Pole Hunter Camaro. Similar it was up on this lift for a long time, getting metal work done. And then we painted the underside, we painted in the interior, we painted the engine bay, we painted the whole body, and then the block reassembled it. So, very cool. If you guys didn't see the Paul Hunter Camaro, I'll put a video link at the top of the screen right here for you. And with that said, I'm going to wrap it up. My name's Erwin. This is Thrills in a Block. We're giving back. Your time is taken away. We'll see you soon. Thank you.